welcome to another interesting episode of the podcast by Tech Researchers Club in cl- collaboration with Voice at VIT Chennai. Well, 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 look who we have here. Hello, Kanaga. Hi, Nandita. So, here we have Kanaga to talk about something very interesting. What are we talking about today? So, let's talk about one of the messiest and biggest tech deals that's happened in recent history. Mm, I have no idea what you're talking about. Elon taking over Twitter. <sighs> okay, this is something we definitely need to talk about. So, let's get right into it. So, let's get back to where this started. Yeah. January 31st. So, that's when Elon decided he's going to buy Twitter's shares. Yeah. Right? So, Twitter is a public company, so which means it is listed and you can buy shares and stocks of Twitter. And on June 3rd, uh, Jan 31st, they started buying stocks and he had about 5% of stocks by mid feb Now, based on the US laws, the SEC, which is the body that requires uh, and manages the market to ensure there's no malpractice hmm. requires that companies and individuals who own over 5% shares of a particular company need to disclose it to the public. Hmm. Okay. Except Elon's Elon ah. and he didn't do that. Yeah, I know. He's like the big head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so let's fast forward right into uh, January, February, March. Yes. And mid-March is when he has about 9%, 9.2% of the stock and he decides to announce this to the public. Hmm. Via Twitter. Oh, okay. That's that's creative. <laughs> yeah, gotta give him points for that. Yeah. So once that happens, there is sort of a crisis that comes about within the Twitter headquarters. Hmm. Because when a person owns about, let's say, 15% or over of a con- particular company's shares, that kind of leads to a hostile takeover, some sort of an acquisition. From Elon's side? From Elon's side. Okay. And to avoid this, they can go into certain strategies, which Twitter did cons- uh, consider to take up the poison pill strategy. Hmm. Poison pill. Yeah. What exactly is poison pill? Okay. So the poison pill strategy is when a company sort of undersells its stocks Mm. secretly or even in public, they kind of give away their particular stocks to their own people at a very reduced price or about zero price. Okay, like discounted? Like no price at all. Oh, okay. Sort of like bringing the company's value down. And why would they do this is to make the company look unattractive to the buyer. Hmm. Does this always work? Not really, but it does help in slowing down the process of a person taking over the company in a hostile manner. Mm. So when we reach this sort of a front and back where there's sort of this tension between Twitter Mm. and Elon, we get into the place where Twitter is ready to welcome Elon into their board Okay. as one of the official members. Oh, that's interesting. So did he? Well, he did. Uh Or so he kind of did. What does that mean? Well, it means Elon's Elon. (laughs) Okay, yeah, so you like last minute, okay, I'm not going to the boards. That was exactly what happened. Oh, okay, so he didn't join the boards. <laughs> he didn't. Okay. So when uh, Twitter, which is Twitter CEO, which is Paraga Garwal, offered him the position of joining up as a person on the board and having opinions about it, because he was sort of uh, having terrible opinions about Twitter on Twitter, running polls about how the free speech is not good enough or the moderation is not right and things of that sort. Him being but him. Officially saying, okay, you know. You can join us and sure, you can have your opinion. You can have the power to do this. And he said, yeah, I'll agree. Except later in text messages to Paragi, he's like, nah. No, bro, I'm chill. I'm not coming. Legend. And he said, I'm going to take the company private. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to take it private. Okay. So he does exactly that. So Twitter and Elon kind of reach a merger agreement Mm. where they're coming onto some sort of a price, a timeline on how they're going to be doing this. So what happens then is uh, once they have his agreement, Elon says he's going to buy the stocks at $54.20 per stock, which is a 38% premium over the current stock price on Twitter. Oh, wait, that will lead to like about $44 million, right? In total. 40 to $44 billion. Oh God, that's, that's a huge amount. Yes, it would be over buying it. Okay, so do you think that it was right for Twitter to just settle down for what, say $52 per share? $54.20, yeah. Okay, per stock. So is that... Do you think it's going? It's good. I mean, I don't exactly have forty-four dollars, forty-four <laughs> billion dollars lying around. Fair point. Don't exactly have yeah. an opinion on it. Yeah, okay. But let's see where this goes, right? So he refuses that he doesn't want to be on the board. Rather, he wants to buy this whole thing, and they come to an agreement about mm. it. And again, Elon's Elon, so he backs out of this agreement, or rather, actually temporarily puts it on hold. Mm. And he says he's not sure about the amount of bots and spam accounts and fake accounts on Twitter. Ah. Oh. And he says, okay, we spoke about this and you guys, you know, have to be more transparent about this. Mm. So Parag Agarwal gets on Twitter and he's like, listen, 
we are evaluating this internally we've done our findings and we're sure there's under five percent of mdaw accounts what is this monetizable daily active users huh, okay so twitter is a company where you don't exactly it's a social media platform where you don't pay to use it right yeah, yeah. and if you're not paying to use a product then you are the product makes sense yeah so logically it means twitter is making its money off of advertisements True. So when you have a certain amount of monetizable daily active users is when you make a certain amount of money and that's how this platform makes profits. So if let's say more than 5% of the active users are not actually active, that's just spam, mm. then you're not exactly making money off of it. Mm. True. So Elon wanted to be sure about that. But in my personal opinion, I just feel like he realized it was a bad idea and a terrible deal to get into. Why? Why? When? when he started raising these qualms about you know the five percent and spam accounts mm -hmm. so anyways Barack Agarwal gets on twitter and has a reply for this and he says well we've done this internal review and we're certain it is under five percent can we give our data out for an external sort of review on this no because it violates you you know your so user you, privacy yeah it's not possible but Elon demands it and then the SEC gets into the process and they're like, you know what, we're certain this is under 5% and we're fine. A lot of chaos. Sure. A lot of chaos because Elon does flip flopping. And with this, he sends his termination letter to Twitter saying, I don't want to buy this. Oh my God. Yeah, because of the spam accounts. Which Twitter replies by suing Elon. Okay, so Twitter sues Elon. Twitter sues Elon. Does Elon pay off? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Okay. So Twitter sues Elon saying he is sort of breaching contract because all of this flip-flopping and having terrible opinions about Twitter and putting it on everywhere and then bashing them, he's sort of making that stock market and the value Go volatile. Mm. And they lost profit by 1% in just the time period of a couple months where Elon tried to take over. Mm. So he can't. And so they go ahead and they sue Elon in the Delaware Chancery Court. Mm. Where they're saying he can't keep diminishing us like this. He can't just like take our stock value down for no reason. Exactly. To which Elon counter sues. Oh, wow. Wait. Oh, wow. On what basis? <laughs> because he says, well, you're breaching contract because I'm paying a lot of money for a sh not a good product, not a great product because we agreed on something else. Hmm. That you wouldn't give me so many spam bots. You give me some amount of active users, something I can profit off of. Hmm. Except they come to this sort of a this back and forth. Okay. Which is when we have our new player into the situation, Peter Zatko. Okay. So who's Peter Zatko? Peter Zatko is the former head of security of Twitter. Oh, okay. And he comes forward with a whistleblower complaint. Um, what exactly is that? Oh, so whistleblower is someone who's working in an organization, who's just left an organization, who's ready to blow the whistle and say, listen, they're not doing the right thing. Huh. And I know this. Like so, a referee. The referee. <laughs> Except he is... They do it for a lot of reasons, be it, let's say, for profit, be it, let's say, for good reason. It could be for a variety of reasons. Mm. So he comes up with this whistleblower complaint to SEC where he says, Twitter is not evaluating their spam bots in the right way. They are hiding it. Oh, so and on top of this, their security provisions are not up to date. Their servers are not up to date. So Twitter is not compliant to what SEC requires the social media platform to be. So this gives Elon an upper hand, right? So he jumps onto this and he takes Peter Zatko's complaint and he gives his second termination letter saying, Twitter, this deal is off. Oh, we can't be doing this. So going, so this flip-flop, flip-flop where initially Twitter did not want to sell their account, sell their company. To Elon or to anyone? Want, to Elon or okay. to anyone in general. Yeah, yeah, they didn't want to sell the company and Elon wanted it. Mm. And then Elon didn't want it. And I now think. Twitter is trying to force to Elon get, to buy it. Buy it. Right? Yeah. They're sort of like trying to forcefully sell it to him. And now they're reaching this point where Elon sends his third termination letter, which is basically a mail that as per my previous email. That's kind of what happens. <laughs> yeah. The third it's termination letter. Continue from the previous mail. Trail mail. Trail mail. And they go on about how, uh, well, we have to end this. Hmm. But with now it, do, it does look like Twitter's in a bad position legally. However, with all the complaints. With all the complaints of Peter Zatko as well as from Elon. However, when we actually get into it with the Twitter's, I mean, Elon's legal team, Elon realizes he has very little chance of winning this in the Delaware court. Hmm. Due to which, on October 4th, he flips a switch and he decides, I will buy it. Oh, God. At the original price. Is he all right? Is he all right? We've all been wondering. Okay. <laughs> We've all been wondering. Yeah. Should have questioned it when he named his son some 
X A E whatever. T twelve. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so he does go forward with the initial fifty four dollars and twenty cents per share, and he is going to take the company private. Why does he want to take it private? It's because you sort of have an overhaul where you can do a lot more changes without uh, it being volatile, mm. without it affecting the market, and it, you're not that monitored when mm. you take a company private, right? So that is why he's giving Makes such a high premium for this, and he's going mm-hmm. forward. And on October 27th, Elon officially became the owner of Twitter, and he announces this by walking into the Twitter headquarters with a sink. Cause get it. Oh. It sink in. Oh my god. <laughs> he really did that? He really did that. Very god. Funny after, like, after like months of struggle, after going through so many lawsuits, he's like, let that sink in. What happens now that he has bought Twitter for real? Well, it's sort of volatile. There's a lot happening. So Elon kind of realized that this is not a profitable business for him. Something that is not going to bring him a lot of profit, at least short term. Hmm. So he needs to make this more profitable long term. So one of his major ideas behind this now is the Blue Twitter, oh. which is an $8 premium account oh. where you get verified. And this he's sort of trying to beat the present and lord system where only celebrities or people who have blue tick marks and everybody can have this as long as they pay $8 per month. Yeah. So what does it bring to the people? One, they get verified. Two, they also have a 50% lesser ads shown to them. Oh. Which sort of gives Compensate. him... Compensates the money. That they put in. But it is sort of a loss for Elon because he loses $6 per person when he cuts out on 50% of ads. Ads. Anyway, so he's, his sort of plan right now is to reach about three times the number of users by 2025. So from 200 million users yeah. to 600 by 2028 to get to 900 million users. And on top of this, he wants to make Twitter like WeChat, which is a Chinese yeah. app. Yeah. Where you can do everything. You can record videos, you can put out tweets, you can text people, you can watch, you can order a cab, you, you can, can do basically food. anything. And why does China have stuff like this? Because they don't have access to a lot of apps. Yeah. But Elon wants to take Twitter to the direction where he makes it everything. Mm, just like, like a, all, all in apps. TikTok. Yeah. yeah. How exactly people are going to be welcoming to it? Only time yeah. will tell. By 2025, we'll know. I think I have the home screen for the rest of my <laughs> apps. True. Anyways, and on top of this, he wants to add a paywall behind Hmm. certain video content, making it more akin to, let's say, OnlyFans. So, overall, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. For the next several months, it's going to be messy. And on top of this, Elon's big on free speech and, like, not letting, uh, you know, some sort of a ban on people or anything. Yeah, and ban on no violence and stuff. Yes, to be able to say anything at all. And this was sort of... freedom to write, like, speak. Freedom to speak. This sort of was reflected, let's say, how on uh, the very first day that Elon took up, there was a 500% increase on people using the N-word on oh, Twitter. Nah, that makes sense, that's, because Elon. That's Elon, yeah. an edgelordness of him. Yeah. Anyway, so the thing is, Elon's version of free speech might not be the one that is the most right or most supported by the US government, or even one that's welcomed by people. Mm, true. Because... Sometimes there are certain things that I believe people shouldn't be able to say mm. or be violent or be demeaning or use slurs. Mm. But Elon's version is completely different where he wants a higher bar before mo- on moderation mm. of what people say. So with these multiple, multiple ideas that Elon's playing with, trying to make Twitter profitable again, there will be some sort of a volatility, some sort of an up and down, a back and forth, like how we saw in the past couple of months. Loopholes. Loopholes and things of that sort that will be leading for the next several years mm. before we reach a point where Twitter might be normal again. Yeah, we'll probably be that. done. One question. So people say people are talking about it. Is it true? I just want to know if it's true. Is Elon Musk going to actually reverse the ban on Donald Trump? Okay, so let's come at it from the perspective of Elon and free speech, right? He wants people to be able to say anything at all on this platform true. with no content moderation. So, maybe, maybe not. And he hinted that he might. But at the end of the day, I don't want Twitter. <laughs> not my phone. I don't read Twitter, so. Yeah, I don't read Twitter either. We just, we just tweet, we just, like, let them tweet about it. We just yeah, talk we about it. I... We talk about it. This moment, let's just objectively try to reach a point where they see. Yeah. That sort of brings us to the end. Yeah. Of this saga. Yeah. So, thank you again for watching this episode. We'll come again next week with another interesting episode. Thank you. Thank you.